Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us thank the Lord for gathering us this Sunday to celebrate this Holy Mass, so that by listening to God's Word, and by partaking of the body and blood of Jesus, we may receive strength, healing and salvation let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate this eucharist let us be sorry for our many sins and let us entrust ourselves to god's merciful love i confess to almighty god and to you my brothers and sisters that i have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in, in the, the highest, highest and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, 
O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make death, nor does He rejoice in the destruction of the living. For He fashioned all things that they, may, that they might have being and the creatures of the world are wholesome, and there is not a destructive drug among them, nor any domain of the netherworld on earth, for justice is undying. For God formed man to be imperishable, the image of his own nature he made him, but by the envy of the devil, death entered the world and they who belong to his company experience it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name, for his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his goodwill, at nightfall, Weeping enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as you excel in every respect, in faith, discourse, knowledge, all earnestness, and in the love we have for you, may you excel in this gracious act also. For you know the gracious act of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. Not that others should have relief while you are burdened, but that as a matter of equality, your abundance at the present time should supply their needs, so that their abundance may also supply your needs that there may be equality. As it is written, whoever had much did not have more, and whoever had little 
did not have less. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered around him and he stayed close to the sea. One of the synagogue officials named Jairus came forward. Seeing him, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him, saying, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hand on her that she may get well and live. He went off with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed upon him. There was a woman afflicted with hemorrhages for twelve years. She had suffered greatly at the hands of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet she was not helped, but only grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. She said, If I but touch his clothes, I shall be cured. Immediately, her flow of blood dried up. She felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Jesus Aware at once that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and asked, Who has touched my clothes? But his disciples said to Jesus, You see how the crowd is pressing upon you, and yet you ask who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. The woman, realizing what had happened to her, approached in fear and trembling. She fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your affliction. While he was still speaking, people from the synagogue official's house arrived and said, your daughter has died. Why trouble the teacher any longer? Disregarding that the message that was reported, Jesus said to the synagogue official, Do not be afraid. Just have faith. He did not allow anyone to accompany him inside except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they arrived at the house of the synagogue official, he caught sight of a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. So he went in and said to them, Why this commotion and weeping? The child is not dead, but asleep. And they ridiculed him. 
Then he put them all out. He took along the child's father and mother and those who were with him and entered the room where the child was. He took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. The child, the girl, a child of twelve, arose immediately and walked around, and that they were utter at that they were utterly astounded. He gave strict orders that no one should know this and said that she should be given something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, after 16 months of waiting, that chair, the Cathedra of the Archbishop of Manila, is now occupied. And we are so happy that we have an Archbishop in the person of His Eminence, Cardinal Jose Advincula. You may have seen the installation rites last Thursday. On Friday, he celebrated Mass with the lay leaders of the Archdiocese of Manila. And last night, he prayed the evening prayer with the religious men and women doing their apostolate in the Archdiocese. And in his homilies, on these celebrations, in his homilies on the first three days of his being the Archbishop of Manila, Cardinal Advincula emphasized, true to his motto as a bishop, Audiam, which means, I will listen, the Cardinal emphasized, that he comes as a listening shepherd. Ang bawat obispo po ay merong tinatawag na episcopal moto. Yung kanilang parang vision, yung kanilang nais na gawin sa kanilang paglilingkod. Diyan po sa gitna, sa center aisle ng ating cathedral, makikita ninyo yung mga coat of arms ng mga naging arsobispo. At sa baba ng kanilang coat of arms, mababasa ninyo in Latin yung kanilang episcopal motto. Iba't iba po yan. Si Cardinal Advincula sa kanyang kathedra nakalagay, Audiam, I will listen. And so he emphasized over and over again to the priests, to the lay faithful, to the religious men and women, that he comes as a listening shepherd. And all shepherds, in fact, should know how to listen. Because Jesus himself is a listening shepherd. This is proven to us by our gospel this Sunday. A synagogue official named Jairus came to Jesus and pleaded with him, My daughter is at the point of death. Please, come lay your hands on her that she may get well and live. Nagpatira pa siya sa paanan ni Jesus at nakiusap siya kay Jesus, Pumunta ka sa amin. Pagalingin mo ang anak kong may sakit. And what was the response of Jesus? He immediately went off with him. 
walang anong tanong nung marinig niya ang pakiusap ni Jairus pinagbigyan niya agad ang kanyang pakiusap ni hindi niya itinanong malala na ba talaga ang sakit ng anak mo gaano ba kalayo ang bahay niyo baka mahirap pumunta doon as he listened to the pleading of this man of this father he immediately went off with him and when he arrived at the house of Jairus Jesus healed the daughter in fact Jesus raised Jairus's daughter back to life And this proves to us what our first reading tells us today, that God is a God of life. God did not create death. God does not rejoice in death. God always gives life. And God gives life because God knows how to listen. Nakapagbigay ng buhay si Jesus dahil marunong siyang makinig. My dear brothers and sisters, listening gives life. Yung simpleng pakikinig nakapagbibigay pala ng buhay. At ang kabaliktara nito ay totoo din. Ang hindi pakikinig, nagdudulot ng kamatayan. Ang isang doktor, kailangan makinig ng mabuti sa sinasabi ng kanyang pasyente. Kasi kung hindi siya makikinig ng mabuti kung ano ba ang nararamdaman, saan ba ang masakit, ano ba ang nagpapahirap sa taong ito, kung hindi makikinig ang doktor, baka mali ang gamot na kanyang maibigay. At sa halip na maging sanhi ng kagalingan, maging daan pa ng kamatayan. You see, listening gives life. Sa ating pamilya, magkakaroon ng buhay kung marunong makinig sa isa't isa. Pag nakikinig tayo sa isa't isa, alam natin ano ba ang pinagdaraanan ng ating kasama sa bahay. Meron ba siyang problema? O meron ba siyang masayang gustong ibahagi sa atin? Kapag nagkakaroon ng lugar ang pakikinig sa isa't isa, nabubuhayan tayo. Pero kapag walang nakikinig, kahit ang ating tahanan parang patay. Walang buhay. Ganyan din sa pamumuno. Kailangan ang mga pinuno marunong makinig para makapamuno ng mahusay. Dahil sa pakikinig ng isang pinuno, nalalaman niya ano ba ang kailangan ng aking pinamumunuan. Ano ba ang kanilang pangangailangan sa buhay. Dahil kapag ang isang pinuno hindi nakikinig, baka hindi rin makapaglingkod ng mabuti. That is why Cardinal Advincula said, In order for me to serve you well, I need to listen. And if I may add, in order for us to love truly, we, we need to know how to listen. Sa pakikinig, nakapagbibigay tayo ng buhay. Sa pakikinig, nakapaglilingkod tayo ng tunay. Sa pakikinig, na nakapagmamahal tayo sa bawat isa ng tunay. Listening, my dear brothers and sisters, is also a disposition of humility. Yung pakikinig ay pagpapakita ng pagpapakumbaba. Kadalasan kasi sa ating pananaw, 
yung mga nagsasalita ay yung mga mas matataas. At yung mga mas mababa, hindi nagsasalita. Nakikinig lang sila. Kaya nga kapag may mas mababa, mas bata na nagsasalita, sinasabi natin, sino ka para magsalita sa akin ng ganyan? Sino ka para pakinggan ko? Ikaw ang makinig sa akin. Hindi ako makikinig sa iyo. Ang mga nakatataas, nagsasalita. Ang mga nakababa, nakakababa, hindi pwedeng magsalita. Makikinig lang sila. Kaya nga, ang Diyos na handang makinig ay pagpapakita ng pagpapakumbaba ng Diyos. And our God is a God who listens to us. St. Paul in our second reading today said, Though he was rich, for your sake he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. He is God, but he allowed himself to be humble, to listen to us, so that by listening to us, He might be able to enrich us with His grace, with His healing, and with His salvation. Kaya sana batuto tayong makinig, hindi lamang magsalita. Maganda rin tanungin ang ating sarili, marunong ba tayong makinig o gusto lang nating magsalita? May mga tao na salita lang ng salita, ayaw makinig. May mga tao na nakikinig para may ipanglaban doon sa nagsasalita. Makikinig pero hahanapan ng butas yung sinasabi nung nagsasalita. Makikinig para may ipansisira ako sa kanya. Makikinig pero hindi naman tunay ang pakikinig. The famous author Stephen Covey said that the biggest problem in communication we have now is that we listen not to understand, but we listen in order to reply. Makikinig hindi upang umunawa, Makikinig upang may maisagot ako sa Kanya. Do we really listen to each other? My dear brothers and sisters, when we listen to each other, we assume the posture of humility. The posture assumed by God Himself. One final lesson about listening based on our gospel today is that while it is important to listen, we must be discerning what or who to listen to. Mahalagang makinig, pero dapat sinusuri ding mabuti ano ba ang pinakikinggan, sino ba ang pinakikinggan. In our gospel, the woman who was suffering for from hemorrhages for twelve years was hopeless. Sabi sa ati ibang helio, labing dalawang taon na siyang dinudugo at kung saan saan na siyang doktor pumunta hindi siya mapagaling, lumalapas siya. And she heard about Jesus. Buti na lang nakinig siya sa kanyang narinig tungkol kay Jesus. Siguro marami nagsasabi sa kanya, dito ka pumunta sa manggagamot na ito. Doon ka pumunta sa albularyong yan. But when she heard about Jesus, she went 
to Jesus and try to touch the cloak of Jesus. And because she listened, she was healed. Buti na lang, tama ang kanyang pinakinggan. When Jesus arrived at the house of Jairus, the people were already wailing and weeping because the child was already dead. And the people from Jairus' house may be raised up to eternal joy in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray in silence for our personal petitions. Let us remember the people who need our prayers and the intentions offered in this Holy Mass. All-powerful God, our lives rest in your hand. Trusting in your providential care, we bring our petitions before you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Bless 
Rest in Lord Jesus, feed us now, give us life. Send us your Spirit, the source of our lives, and together we will serve you with love. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts Heaven and earth are full of your glory Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest Please kneel You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, and with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The Body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pakiisa sa pagdiriwang ng ating banal na misa ngayong linggong ito. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga nakatayo sa likod at nasa labas na kaisa rin natin sa ating pagdiriwang. We thank you for uh, following our health protocols so that our worship, our celebration may be safe for everyone. We also wish to thank those who are following the live streaming of this Mass. We thank the different social media platforms sharing the streaming of this Mass. And we always welcome everyone, even those joining the live streaming, as part of the online community of the Manila Cathedral. Maraming salamat din po sa lahat ng mga Manila Cathedral volunteers and staff na naglilingkod sa ating pagdiriwang ngayon. Sa darating pong Martes, June 29, the Solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul, magkakaroon po tayo ng pagdiriwang ng banal na misa dito sa Manila Cathedral at 6 o'clock in the evening. The Solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul is also Pope's Day. And so on that evening Mass, our Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Charles Brown, in the presence of our Archbishop, Cardinal Jose Advincula, will, will celebrate the Mass. And so we invite you to join this Mass by either coming here or joining the live streaming of the Pope's Day Mass on Tuesday, June 29, 6 p.m. And may God bless this new week. May God give us life by teaching us to listen truly to each other. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in His kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you now and forever. Amen. May He nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds now and forever. Amen. May He turn your steps toward Himself and show you the path of charity and peace now and forever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Stand before the Lord.
the grand prize. Five hundred years of faith, grateful today. Totally yours, we give ourselves faithfully yours until the end to your mission, Lord. We give our hands.